Greetings, brothers and sisters. You are watching Grip TV. I'm your host, Warren Davis. I'm here today with the Reverend Michelle Simmons of Why Not Prosper Incorporated. Reverend Michelle, welcome to the show. Thank you, Mr. Davis, for having me. I'm glad to be here. You're welcome. Glad to have you here. We've been waiting a long time to get this interview. All right. It's here now. Absolutely. That's absolutely. It. That's right. God is good. Yes, he is. Reverend Michelle, as you are so affectionately called mm -hmm. by those around you, could you tell us a little bit about your own addiction and your uh, incarceration experience? What was that like for you? Uh, my early years, um, uh, my incarceration uh, came after a lot of abuse. So my early years was basically a bunch of trauma. I was abused as a child um, and I never told nobody. And as a direct result of that, I ended up um, um, picking up drugs and alcohol. And as a direct result of that, I went to jail. So using was, um, my childhood went past really quickly. I just, all I remember basically is uh, being in this motorcycle accident with my father at an early age. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I came home from the hospital, I was abused by him. And it never stopped for 15 years from the time I was eight. I think I was around eight, 12 years old. Whatever grade you in in fifth grade, I remember fifth grade so clear because mm -hmm. the teacher bought the work for me to do to the hospital. Okay. And I remember like that happening. I didn't know back then what had happened. Um, I knew what had happened, but um, what I didn't know how it was going to affect the rest of my life. So, um, you know, tell you a little bit about my drug addiction and my, you know, it started with the Miller Station, all right? And then it led to the drug addiction and then it led to the incarceration. How long were you addicted to drugs? Well, uh, I don't really remember when I started. I remember like starting probably at a very young age, maybe 10 or 12. Uh, people in my house had joint and marijuana in the ashtray. I remember picking up roaches, smoking it. I remember seeing a beer or two in the refrigerator, drinking it. So I don't really know when I crossed over the line from just general use um, to like an addiction well I do actually know when I do cross I, I did cross over that line I remember laying in a jail in California and I was sitting on my bunk and and um, uh, I was crying in my eyes I had cried so much from being locked up again and and my eyes had swollen up so bad and I was like oh my god I got a problem because the parole lady told me she said listen every month be in my office on Wednesday and I'm going to test you for drugs and alcohol and if you clean you stay on the street and if you're not clean you're going to go to jail mm -hmm. and I went in there dirty after knowing the day and the time that she was going to test me and I um and I went to jail and it was like after that after I got locked up I was laying in a bunk like oh my god something is wrong with you mm -hmm. something is wrong wow, with you wow. So I really didn't think I had a problem with it, you know, with the trauma of the Miller Station and then the drugs and then all of that. I didn't know when I crossed over to a problem. So it all kind of rolled together to create a problem. Pretty much. That you couldn't handle. Pretty much. Well, let me ask you then, um, what exactly happened to uh, make you cry out to the Lord Jesus Christ and to actually... Um, Tell me about that moment where you there was no going back to that, but only going forward for you. Well, you know what, sir? I really do not know the day, the time, or the hour that the crossover happened. I just know it was a process because I went back and forth in jail, back and forth to jail probably like four or five times. And every time I went back, um, seeds were planted in the penitentiary. Like, for example, I was in CIW, California Institution for Women, and my celly was Susan Atkins, and she was one of the Manson killer ladies. And I didn't even know her. I was too young to know about the the crime that she committed mm -hmm. or anything. All I know that was my bunkie mm -hmm. and my bunkie began to tell me about Jesus and how much he loved me and he had a plan for my life. Mm -hmm. Period. And then she said uh, you know, she you know, she didn't really talk about a crime or what she did. All she did was preach Jesus to me. And so that was a seed that wow. was beginning to be planted. Later I found out who she was and all of that. But she had planted those seeds and she had started encouraging me in the jail to don't hang out with the people that were still smoking joint in the jail and don't go hang out in the circle where all the negativity was going she said but go over to the chapel <laughs> she said go over to the chapel and like I don't know if it was that 
commitment that I actually got over to the chapel? Probably not, but I went home and I went back and I went home and I came back and then there was another lady. I had another bunkie. She was an old lady named Miss Pac-Man that was a lifer that was there for years and she kept saying, Michelle, God got something for you. God gonna change your life. And I kept saying, well, I don't know what it is because my father been doing it to me all my life. I don't like no God. I've been raped. I've been molested. I've been drove off a cliff. I couldn't, y'all couldn't tell me nothing about God. I didn't really like him. So during all my first commitments in prison, I was getting seeds planted, mm. but I really wasn't feeling none of that yet. Mm. You understand? So I don't mm -hmm. have the line or the actual date, but I do remember being in the jail and I remember this one service. A lady came. She was a heroin addict. She had shot up in her neck all of these years. She had been molested by her father as well. And she had like had her own business. She was doing well for herself. And I remember her coming in that jail, preaching and telling her story. And I remember her at the end of it saying, do anybody want to know the Lord Jesus? And my hand just slipped up. Mm. It just slipped wow, up wow. and it was right there in the jail. It wow. was this song that the lifers were singing. I don't know why they call his name, but she did that call to Christ. They sung that song and I just started weeping like a little baby. Wow. Like a little baby. And, wow. and I think that was maybe my crossover time. But then after we gave our life to God, she instructed the ones that was that had did that to go back to your cell and to like cry out to the Lord really start calling his name and reading your Bible. And it was in jail that I fell in love with Jesus. I wow. remember they gave me the easy to read Bible because the uh, King James version that I know to be the day was too hard. The mm. D's to those to thou. Right, right, and right, this right. other one was so plain and simple. And I started reading Matthew and I started seeing um how he was blessing people. The lady was bleeding for 12 years. One man was blind. One man was limp. I said, oh my God, he helping all these people. Maybe he could help me because remember I had never told <laughs> nobody all Amen. the stuff I had been through with my father. Mm. I had never told nobody. It was like internally eating me up. And that's why I stay high. Mm. That's why every time I got out, I went right back to the pimp and to the drug man and to the whole stroll and got high again. I didn't have no refuge. Mm. I didn't have no refuge, but Praise it was God. in that jail. Those seeds started to be planted. Wow. And, and in jail, um, I went back a couple times. But then the last time in 1999, uh, I told the chaplain I had got saved. I said, Miss, I am not from here. I'm from Philadelphia because my time was done in California. Okay. And I said in 1994, I, 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 in 1994, I left PA and I went to LA. And in 94, that's when all of this, uh, uh, you know, the cycle of incarceration started, all right? So the bottom line was in 99, I told the chaplain, I said, I'm getting ready to get released. I'm not from here. I don't have nobody here at all. And I say, all I know is the dope man. Whenever I would get released, I would call a dope man or the drug man and say, yo, I'm getting ready to get out. Can y'all pick me up? And I was getting high leaving from the jail. Wow. So I never got a chance. So once I got saved and gave my life to the Lord, I told the chaplain my story. I said, I'm not from here. I said, please, I don't know nothing else. Nothing else do I know. So that's why I don't, that's why I be, keep coming back because I never make it to the PO. Wow. You know, and then she said, well, it's a program in South Central Los Angeles that's called His Shelter in Arms. And it's a little lady. She comes up here. It's a spiritual program. Maybe you could go in there and then you could, you know, start your life all over. And it was that day, August 23rd, 99. I left the jail and went into that program. And I have been clean ever since. Praise the Lord for that. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. God is good. Yes, he is. He's, and he's really faithful. stepped into your life. Yes, he did. Yes, he has. So let me ask you, with God stepping into your life like that and with uh, what you're involved with now uh, in the Why Not Prosper, how did you get the vision? Where did the vision come from for this Why Not Prosper Incorporated? You know what? That's another one. Well, I know when the vision dropped in my spirit, I had came home from L.A. in, in June 11th of 2000. When I got home, I had, uh, when I came home from L.A., I came home on Greyhound and two green trash bags, okay? I had absolutely nothing. The kids was in the system. I had to beg my mom to let me come back to her house. I moved up in Norristown. And what happened was I came back. I had a couple months clean. Okay. And I um and I didn't have no vision to do no house or no why not prosper anything. But what happened was I had a vision to get my kids back out the system. And I joined the church, the chaplain, and the lady said, go home and find a church. Don't go home and find the streets. You know how to do that already. Go home, find Jesus, find some people that's believing in the Lord and fellowship it and get yourself 
acclimated back in Pennsylvania to the things of God. Mm. So what happened, how I get the vision of why not prosper, I asked the pastor, please pray with me, sir. I'm trying to get my kids, okay. all right? And then he said, I said, and they said, I cannot have my kids until I find a house. And I said, Pastor, you got a house? <laughs> right? Praise the Lord. And he said, well, you know what? We might. The church owns a house next door and it was empty and maybe you could rent it out for your children. So he commenced to taking me or he didn't take me. He sent the administrator of the church over to show me the house. And it was in that house. I was walking through and the Lord said, this is a house you pose are open for women coming from prison. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. That's something. Drop right in my spirit. I didn't have no clue about no house. That's I didn't even even had no education. I didn't have my kids back. And I remember going home saying, Mom, God told me to open up a house for women coming from prison. She said, well, first you better get your kids back. And second, you better hurry up and get a place and get out of my house. But God... <laughs> God has said, you're going to open up a house. So I start running all over Norristown, telling everybody God told me to open up this house for women coming from prison. And we took our first resident January the 3rd of 2003. Amen. 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 So that's where the vision of Why Not Prosper came from. It just dropped in my spirit from the Lord. And now it's been 14 years we've been up and running. That is beautiful. With three different locations and two different That's an resources. anointing. Thank you. That has to be an anointing because you can't just jump up and say, I'm going to do that because things like this don't last unless it's anointed. Amen. This Amen. is an anointed program. Amen. So tell me more about the services that you actually offer here at Why Not Prosper Incorporated. Okay, so Why Not Prosper has about three or four different programs under its umbrella. And the first thing we do is we have our transitional living facility. Um, one is licensed by the state um, for drug and alcohol. And um, what we do is we take women coming from prison. They stay here with us for six months to a year. Or we have three goals here at Why Not Prosper. And that is to help them regain custody and reunification with their children. Two is to make family sustaining wages. And three is to stay clean from drugs and alcohol alcohol while building their foundation um, under the Lord's umbrella because anything that's not built on the Lord is definitely going to be, the Bible says, sink and sand. So our goals here Absolutely. is just to help them um, reunite, stay clean, and um, make family sustaining wages. We also have a resource center for those that come home from prison. They might have somewhere healthy to go home to, but they need an ID, they might need a birth certificate, they might need a resume, they want one-on-one -on -one counseling, they want spiritual counseling, they could come into our drop-in center that's open from 10 to 2, that's up in Germantown. And um, then thirdly, we have a pre-release program that's for women that's coming home that need maybe some GED, they may need um, some, uh, we link mentors up with them so um we you have, have parenting the, classes they stuff. have parenting in the why not prosper house itself th there's a whole curriculum of classes that they have so like monday nights might be budgeting tuesday night might be life skill wednesday night is like wow. a credit repair thursday is trauma friday relapse prevention you know i think and people need that they're not even in prison you better know <laughs> it it is true it is true That's life wonderful. skills can never be learned enough um let me ask you um I'm going to step away from the, the uh, scripted questions for a minute. Do you have a special program or training that you do for women that may be involved with prostitution? Yeah, well, what's going on now is Why Not Prosper has been open for 14 years, and we've always serviced women coming from prison, all right? But now what we're finding is that we have a little specialization something for women for prostitution, and um, that's a new endeavor for me. I'm only in my third month of working with that specialized population. Basically, I've been working with the ex-offender as a whole, all right? Um, so the women of prostitution basically is, um, they're in that same... They are coupled with mental illness. They're coupled with the drug addiction on top of sexual trauma. So it's one thing mm -hmm. to be sexually exploited. It's another thing to be abused. It's another thing to be addicted. So I think the first thing that I'm learning mm -hmm. is how to compartmentalize all their needs. Mm -hmm. And to do uh, and to prioritize their needs, you know, some of them want to come right home and get a job. I say, well, first, let's get you stable with some medication. Mm -hmm. Second of all, let's get you some outpatient treatment services. You understand because mm -hmm. the medicine without treatment, they say medicine and treatment works well together. Mm -hmm. If you just medicate them and they're not talking about their issues and their trauma and their recovery, it kind of like all we need to go in on simultaneously. Mm -hmm. So that's the population that we're specializing in right now in that prostitution. 
prostitution population okay. and we're learning their needs are very complex mm -hmm. you know and we're learning that we need to work on all their needs at the same time it's like if I start talking to you about your trauma but don't give you no medicine then you're probably going to use because the pain is too deep mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. So if I start talking about your recovery and how to help you stay clean, and we haven't talked about your triggers and what caused you to use, you understand? Mm -hmm. It's all for naught, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And Jesus is the foundation. You know, here at Why Not Prosper, we've always been faith-based. And I believe that um, without Christ and without Jesus, you're just not going to make the journey because the same situations, the depression, the anxiety, the rejection, the disappointments, they are right there on the bank waiting. I don't care who you are. I don't care who your mother is. I don't care how much money you have. Those negative attributes are there and they're going to come past your door sooner or later. But with Jesus, he's the one that fight that stuff for you. Amen. If you don't have Jesus, then you use the drugs and the alcohol and the criminal activity Amen. Amen. to fight those negative because there's somebody going to push you off somebody going to disappoint you and before they come in here they're using those other vices mm -hmm. so we want to give them the jesus vice amen hallelujah amen. and that's going to make the difference you know we've been operating for 14 years i never got a salary i don't i don't get paid anything for what i do here um recently um we just got funded for the city i am going to start to get a salary but i was very 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 um clear to all that i served that we wasn't taking jesus out the picture amen amen fantastic reverend michelle you have attained since you've um, um come away from the drug alcohol you've attained bachelor degree that's correct you've attained a master's degree that's correct and you're working on a phd that's correct you've written two books one called why not prosper and the other one keep it moving yes sir that book keep it moving what is that book about uh, the book Keep It Moving um, came out in August of 2014, and the goal of Keep It Moving is to let anybody out there know that no matter what you go through, no matter what you've been through, you can definitely make the journey. With Jesus Christ, you can make the journey, and that's what that book really tells. It gives you a chronological order of the mishaps and the situations and all the traumas I suffered from having a baby to being drove off a cliff to opening up the organization Why Not Prosper. And it's just a book of encouragement to let people know that no matter what, because the statistics say eight out of 10 women have been abused. You know, we all suffer from, uh, you know, all type of negative attributes, but no matter what, you can make the journey. And that's why we named it Keep It Moving, because that's what you gotta do. You gotta keep it moving. I don't care what happened, moving. what come down the pike, who leave, who go, you need to keep it moving. Absolutely. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So I guess my last question would be, uh, how can a female that's incarcerated right now um, take advantage mm -hmm. of uh, these services before they come out, how they learn about it and stuff? And what about the people that are already out? Um, that didn't know about it before they got out. Okay. You know, how can okay. they find out about it okay. now? We need contact information, website and stuff, you know, okay. that stuff. Okay, so um, first part of the question, two-part question here. Mm -hmm. So the first part of the question, how do the ladies that's incarcerated find out about Why Not Prosper? That's a real easy one because I run around the whole state of Pennsylvania and I drop off literature to all the prisons that house women. Mm -hmm. uh, this state has 67 counties and 59 of the counties have facilities for women. So Berks mm -hmm. County, Lancaster County, Allegheny County, Schuylkill County, um, Montgomery County, uh, Berks County. I take the literature to those prisons and I give them to the chaplains and I give them to the social workers so as ladies are getting ready to get released they have some literature and some information that they could go um, and that they could write me and I will go do a face-to-face -face interview with them mm. to see if they're a viable candidate for the program so um, that information is in most of the jails so that's real easy I do my I do my due diligence making sure that no women that's locked up never have to go back to ever using drugs or um, being abused or any of that you know they have some new outlets you know I want to look at why not prosper as being a bridge mm. from the prison to successful mm. life 
You know what I mean? So the literature is there to jails. Um, and it's been in the jails for like 10 years. And I always update the literature and call the social workers because they turn over and things of that nature. So that's how they know in the prison, okay? okay. Mm -hmm. And um, those that's on the street, what I do is I drop literature at the parole office. I drop literature at the mental health clinics. Oh. I drop literature at outpatient facilities. And um, you may have a family member or a loved one that's struggling with addiction or you may have a family member that needs the Lord Jesus Christ so you can always call on um, why not prosper we're located in Germantown um, we have a website which is www.whynotprosper.org again it's www dot why not prosper dot org um you can email me at why not prosper at aol.com so again you can email me at why not prosper at aol.com or you could call directly to the facility which is 610-716-1113 um again the number 610-716-1113 one 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 three. You know, our motto here at Why Not Prosper is that we offer every woman in distress a hand up and not a hand out. So if it's you yourself that needs some help, dial a number, 610-716-1113. Um, if it's a family member, dial a number, 610-716-1113. And we're going to be here to receive you, receive your calls, and do what we can to help you in your recovery and help you in your salvation. Reverend Michelle. Yes, sir. This is such an anointed program. Oh, thank you, sir. Um, I was really blessed to uh, be able to come and interview you today. Thank we you. really want to thank you uh, on behalf of uh, the watchers of Grip TV uh -huh. uh, for appearing on the show today. Thank you, you know, so thank much. Thank you so much. God bless you, sir. And God thank bless you, you and God bless Why Not Prosper. Amen. Folks, you heard it f straight from Reverend Michelle. And as I always say, be blessed in your recovery.